Hi there, uh, welcome to this video about how to create your very first app in USource. Now, when you first log into USource, or hopefully you've created an account and you've gone in and logged in, then at this point you have a workspace that you are able to use. So uh, I can see I'm logged in here, this is my username and this is my status, which is to do with your um, the level of your account. Yours might look slightly different. I've got a, a Teacher Plus um, admin account. So if I've, um, well, when I've first logged in, then I come down here and I'm gonna to go to Workspace. And Workspace is where I can create all my apps and I can load up any images that I'd like to use or see which images I've got to use. Um, same with sounds and same with data files. So this is where it's almost like a, a user area that you might be used to. Um, or a, a, a drive, if you like, where, where you're going to keep all your stuff. So I'll go to Workspace, and this is where I'm able to create some apps. If I scroll down on my account, so I can see all these apps I've previously created. Um, obviously in yours, if it's the very first app that you've uh, done, then it'll probably be empty. So first thing I'm going to do is create this app. Now, traditionally, whenever you um, learn a new programming language, the very first thing that you do, um, or the very first thing that you're taught how to do, is a program called Hello World. For no other reason, really, I think, these days, than um, pretty much everyone who's learned a programming language um, will have gone through that program, whether it's through uh, learning it through a book or through a classroom. It's just a tradition amongst programmers that when they teach other people to program, the very first program they do is this. It's, it's a very simple uh, idea and the program itself is literally just to display the words hello world to the screen so we're going to put this in so application and I'm going to put this in as hello world okay and create a new app so here's my app here and I can see the code for that app just underneath here which of course is empty at the moment because I've not put any code in so I'm going to go to edit source so source is basically the source code for the app. Okay, so I'm going to come in here. And what this tells me at the moment is that I have a function called start. And you find this with every single app that you create. And the reason being is that when you source runs your app, it looks for this function, the function called start. And that's where it runs. That's the first thing that it runs all the time. So we're going to place our code inside of the curly brackets. Now, just to explain, we have, I've just mentioned about function start. Each function, whenever you name a function or create a function, has a set of brackets after it. And this is, if you like, what shows that it's a function. You'll learn more about what you can do with these brackets um, sort of in, in future videos to do with functions. Okay, but what it does have is a set of curly braces here. Okay, and these curly braces for just uh, probably easier if I zoom in so you can sort of see that they're uh, curly brackets. Okay, so we can see them there. Okay, I'll zoom back out. Now, what we do is we place our code for this function between the open and the close of these curly brackets. Now, just to be clear as well, is I did actually set my, one of my students uh, the task to find out what the real name for curly, curly brackets was. And he came back to me the next lesson and said he'd done the research and said they were actually called curly brackets. So, so that's what these are. Now, the curly brackets basically state or, or define where the start and the end of the function is. So anything outside of the last curly bracket there is outside of that function. So we want to go inside because that's the function that's been called. So we're going to do a gfx dot right line. Okay. And inside of there, we're going to put the text. Hello world. Okay. So if we now just run that, if I just uh, zoom back out a little bit. So we we can do some things here. We can either say, well, don't bother saving the changes. Or we can say, well, save the changes. But we also want to check it. So if I go to save source and check, 
what happens here is it's running a little bit of code in the background or your jar plugin is that's going off and checking the code that you've written to see if you've got any bugs in it any little um, coding errors or what we call syntax errors so in this case this seems fine okay we get a green tick if it's not right we get like a little red uh, or a little hand with a red outline so if I press play now then this actually goes off and runs my app and we can see it's printed hello world to the screen that's the actual what it's actually meant to have done there okay so not particularly exciting as an app but it's a start okay so we have actually created a program without any errors that's produced this uh, code to the screen now let's just go back and just explain what's happened the main thing we can see is this this, this one line of code that we've got called gfx.writeline okay hello world now gfx.writeline is a graphics function okay there are a number of graphics functions that you'll find under elc functions and they all begin with gfx so gfx dot so the dot's basically saying it's a it's a function inside of there and it's basically dot right line so gfx dot right line is a right line function in the graphics family of functions and the purpose of right line is to is to be able to type uh, or display some simple text to the screen on its own line and what we put in the brackets okay is we need to pass to it a value that says this is the text that we want to write so in this case the text is hello world and we put that text in speech marks so that it doesn't think that it's a variable which is something else we're going to come across in the next few videos okay so gfx right line hello world and that's the idea is that our program uses this function to display this text to the screen and we could see that it worked. So that's your very first app in USource called Hello World.